Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the fact that it has not only broken 30K, but it has also pushed past 31K. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm sure you guys know what we're gonna do. We're going to look at the level of overvaluation from a few different metrics, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, we see the current price is 31,399. We're first going to put on our regression bands, okay? And compare the level of overvaluation from the summer of 2019 to where we currently are today because we are closing in on the same level. Now, this, of course, um, you know, to, 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 to think about this metric, you have to think about it in terms of, okay, well, the regression band is fit to quote unquote non-bubble data. So first you have to buy that. If you buy that, then if we take the overvaluation from the fair value line, you can see that in 2019, if we try to get it as accurate as possible, it was around 192% above the fair value, okay? Now we're gonna do the same thing for today. To get to 192% above the fair value, right there, it would correspond to a $32,000 Bitcoin. More precisely, 32434 Of course, we're not saying that this would necessarily be the top. This is just saying that in order for us to get to the same level of overvaluation from the quote-unquote non-bubble price, or the, the fair value price as fit to non-bubble data, for us to get to that level, then we would need to get to around 32,434. So this is one metric, okay? And then the second metric for us to get to the same regression band that we reached in 2019, you can see here. So one of the things we note is last market cycle, we had this general, let's see if we can get it, yep. This general accumulation phase in this corridor right here. And then in this cycle, we had this general accumulation phase so far, but the market structure has been significantly different. We had to move up to this level and back down to this band. And now we've come back up. If we look at the time between these, right? If we look at the time between them, this one was approximately 337 weeks. And then to go from here to the next one, so far it's been about 42 weeks. And then say from the bottom to the top here, it was around 28 weeks. So we're back up, we're, we're closing in on the top, right? We are closing back in on the top. If we zoom in, you can see we're almost there. This one, it levels off at the end because we're on weekly time frames and it needs to, to actually get that last weekly time frame, but it corresponds to just over $32,000. So we're closing in on the same level uh, that we see. If you actually look back to 24, 2019, we went over it slightly, okay? We actually went over the regression band by about, on the wick here, by about eight and a half percent. So if we were to do the same thing here from that level, up eight and a half percent would give you if I can get it, it would give you around a 34,000, 34,754. Again, we're not saying these are necessarily the tops. We just want everyone to be fully aware of the level of overextension from either the, the fair value fit or just our regression bands, okay? Now, the next thing, we wanna go take a look at the BLX, which does not have the updated price since it's closing price, but let's just switch it over to a different one that does, that goes back, bit stamp goes back pretty far. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the overvaluation from the 20 week. Okay. And this is the log of the price divided by the 20 week. And you can see where we currently are. This was almost the level that we turned around in the summer of 2017, but by the peak, by the end of 2017, you can see we even went much higher compared to where we currently are today. So, it's really hard to know. Um, it certainly seems like we're getting fairly overextended by a lot of metrics, 
right? If we if we say look at the weekly RSI as well, which is probably not, it's probably one of my least favorite indicators. But if you look at say like the weekly RSI, you can see that we didn't even hit this level during the last market cycle. And the last time we had a weekly RSI that was this high was December of 2013. Just to give you an idea of the level of you know how far Bitcoin has been overbought. Okay, of course you can argue this time is different. I would, you know, I, I, I there's no point in discussing that. But just in terms of 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 how far overbought we are according to RSI, we haven't seen this level since December of 2013. The bull market support band, which most people probably at this point have completely forgotten about because of how far above it we are. The 20 week SMA corresponds to approximately 15,688 and the 21 week EMA corresponds to approximately 17,309. So these, these, these moving average moving averages are what we would want to hold as support in the event of a correction. Again, we're not saying we're going to have an immediate correction. We're just saying that when it does correct, we would want to hold this level of support. And those are the prices that it corresponds to today. Of course, if it takes us several weeks to get there, then those those values will, will be um, elevated by a decent amount. We know that we've seen 40% corrections in the last market cycle. Um, one thing to note is that by the time we got to the point where we were overextended by more than 50%, we actually had a hard time holding it. If we were to jump, if we were to dump to the 20 week moving average from here, it would be about a 50% dump. Now that could be somewhat deceiving because that implies we dump instantaneously. If we have say like a, a dump over several weeks, then it might only be 40%. If it takes even less or if it takes even longer, it could be 30%. Again, if this continues to extend, right, then these levels will continue to go up. And by the time, you know, by the time we do have a correction, those levels will be much further elevated than they currently are today. So with that said, for us to get into the peak regression band, right, that takes us back several cycles, it would imply a lower valuation at the peak of around 50, 54,000, okay, and an upper valuation of around 80,000. So if it's between, if, if we go there tomorrow, then it would imply the price is between 54 and 80,000 or so. The reason why we say tomorrow is because we know this is, is, is moving up. So, you know, suppose it, it comes up here a long time later. I mean, you know, by the end of uh, 2021, this would correspond to, you know, clo closer to 100k at the peak. And then if it continues on further extending from that, it'll be higher and higher. So we're just looking at where it is instantaneously. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Pretty exciting times. Uh, I do want to remind everyone to be responsible. Of course, I don't know where the top is. I don't think anyone does before we see a substantial correction. But just remember, in general, to be responsible. Don't don't make any silly decisions that are that could theoretically, you know, if there's if there's plausible paths to it not working out uh, in your favor, or you're taking on a lot of risk. Just remember the risks associated with it, um, and and plan accordingly. As we as we've said before, right? The pigs will be fed, the hogs will be slaughtered. I still at this time hold the majority position of my Bitcoin. I have taken some profits along the way, but I still hold the majority of my position. The reason is because it's again, based on the risk levels. It's based on the risk levels. And I like to save the highest cells for the highest risk levels. And we're simply not at the highest risk levels yet. If that gives you any indication of what it could be like, either in a few weeks, if this continues, or later on in the market cycle, if this does not immediately take us up to the local top or the new global top. So. Hopefully this video has been informative. Remember, we do have the premium list. The prices on the premium list monthly subscription will be going up. Um, tomorrow's the last day to sign up at the lower rate. If you want to sign up at the lower rate, check out the description below. We have the risk dashboard, the trade view indicators, the Telegram alert channel, the Telegram chat room, the, the risk dashboard. Have you already said that one? Um, and a few more things. So we have a whole lot of stuff. Make sure you check it out. You have two more days to sign up before the prices go back up. Uh, subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time. Bye.